Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again, folks, to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard. Hey, we're going to have a treat for you today. But before I mention that, I hope, as I've always said, is that you outreach to um, to fellow veterans and uh, loved ones and the like and get them to sign up for their benefits, if you will. Very important, very, very important. Uh, it seems though there's a major effort to get out and you know, get folks to sign up because uh, there's definitely a need, okay? So let's do that, all right? Well, now, what we're going to do today is that we've got someone, I just so happened I had to go all the way to Grants Pass to, to pick this individual up well, uh, in, 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 in another way, but basically drove himself down here, but and he goes all the way from Grants Pass to be on the show today to talk about some issues and some uh, and concerns that were that are basically, uh, let's put it, uh, current types of uh, events, if you will. And uh, things like, for instance, like things like um, about uh, uh, Mr. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, you know about Donald Trump, who happens to be running for president of these United States on the Republican ticket side. How about the immigration issue? Immigration issue. How about the Confederate flag aspect of it and how it sort of relates and whatever? Uh, what about slavery and, um, and the Civil War uh, and, as it relates to this Confederate flag piece? How about Planned Parenthood? That's a big issue then, you know, the whole issue of, of selling uh, body parts. That's, that's big on the news at this point in time. And what about Senator Cruz and, and his comments uh, of late? Uh, what about maybe, maybe we might throw a little gun control aspect of it and just talk about firearms. That's another issue in the, in the aspect of it. And uh, most important, uh, uh, what about, um, you know, like I said, like I've done to the, for the Democratic Party, I've invited them over many times over. Unfortunately, I've, I've, not had the, I've not had the successful rate with the Ds as I've had with the Republican Party. And it, that's who exactly what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about the gentleman that's seated here to my, to my right, but to your left on the screen, and former chair of the Republican Party, Mr. Art Robinson. How you doing, Art? Hi, Al. Good, good, good. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting show, so so just sit back and be comfortable. I'll start off by saying that, um, and I'll, I'll do it this way, just at a, at a, as, a, as a flow of the, the, this thing goes well. He's written a book. He's written a book. It's a very interesting book, Prosperity and Charity for America, Common Sense. Uh, he's dated it in 2012, but realistically, don't, don't need the date. It should just be Common Sense. Art Robertson, Ph.D. There he is right there. And there's some interesting quotes down here in the back here. I notice there's, a, there's several quotes. Uh, the one that sticks out, let me put, let me go, I'm going to throw one. The first one here is, Art Robinson's philosophy is that the government is far too intrusive in our lives. He understands we have to stop the spending in Washington, the growth of the national debt, and allow the Constitution to function. I strongly recommend the 4th Congressional District of Oregon put Art Robinson in the Congress of the United States. Harrison Schmidt, Apollo astronaut and former U.S. Senator. Okay? All right. And then there's the one that just sort of brings it home a bit. And it says, Robinson is a pathological nut job. Interesting. I wonder who said that. Let me take my glasses off. Let's see. Peter DeFazio, career politician and arts opponent. Is that right? Let me put my glasses right. back on. Did I do it right? Did I say it right? Robinson is a pathological nut job. Peter DeFazio, career politician and arts opponent. Well, you know, what's interesting about this is that um, Art's never been in politics before, and then all of a sudden there he is running for Congress against Peter DeFazio, who's been kind of like a staple up in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story that I've heard, and it's pretty much all laid out there, is that, um, and I'll, I'll just be quick, is that all of a sudden you say, well, gee whiz, I'm just going to go out and just see who this guy is, so to speak. And at the end of the day, all of a sudden, there he was. He's, he's gone from, from running to office to, to chair of the Oregon Republican Party uh, to, um, uh, you know, to very much involved, if you will, in his community. And uh, so I, I really respect you for doing that, Art. You know, too often we don't get enough folks like yourself to actually get involved. Hmm. And uh, he saw, he, I'm sure he saw, he's also seen the very interesting thing about media and social media and, mm -hmm. and how it functions and 
beforehand there, there, there was no name calling and all this other good stuff but then all of a sudden he knows that's part of the that's part mm -hmm. of what we do and live in so what we're going to do we're going to take take the opportunity to have uh, art uh, give us a little background of of all that is involved but most but most important we're going to really take the time to talk about those areas that i just mentioned that are sort of like on our mind mm -hmm. and a lot of folks don't want to discuss them but we're going to t discuss them here in oregon here on the oregon voters digest here at uh, portland cable media okay Let's start off first. All right, you wrote this book. Mm -hmm. Why did you write the book? It's a, I wrote it to uh, for the campaign in 2012, okay. so that the voters would understand better what I stood for. Okay. Okay. So that's a better resume than what you oh, yes. in the Oregon voter, actually in the voters guide, right? Well, yeah. If those who took the time to okay. read it, yeah. Sounds great. Sounds great. Okay. The other one is, um, you know, you, you you ran for office. How'd you feel about that? You're running for office. Well, I'm glad I did. Okay. Uh, it's. Uh, I've learned more about politics than I wanted to know. <laughs> but it, it's an interesting experience, and it also taught me a lot about why our country is having the troubles it has, because mm -hmm. they stem from the people we have in office, and I, I know a lot more now today than mm -hmm. I did before. I knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. Our family wanted to help. We decided we'd try that. Mm -hmm. Now I really understand what hap what's happening. So you felt good about it after you start knocking on the door. It actually just reinforced your enthusiasm. Well, the American people really are run. great. I right. mean, the, <clears throat> the the actual pros prospect of running for office and mixing with thousands of people right. like you, that's all positive. That's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the the political infighting is a different right. kind of thing. Right, right, right. There were other activities that you got involved in after you ran for office uh, locally, right, within the within Grants Pass? Well, uh, I'm active in the party there, but the right. main thing I got involved with is I was sort of accidentally elected state chair, and that taught me a lot more about okay. why okay. our country's okay. in trouble. Okay. <laughs> so what do you think about your, your time? You did a tenure, one year? The I Republican was a year and a half. Year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah, okay. I, I finished out the term of, uh, of a, ch a chair that served for about six months. Okay. Okay. Good. So what do you think? About what? As far as the party is concerned. Oh. The ch well, as far as your time that you spent let, there. Let me put it this way. Uh, Republican principles are very good. Uh, the Constitution and Bill of Rights are a tremendous blessing to this people. It's made life in the United States wonderful and made many accomplishments possible. So the Constitution and Bill of Rights, uh, they are bedrock Republican principles. Uh, there are more complicated aspects of that. And in general, the Republican principles held by Republicans in this country are outstanding and very good for the country. Those are Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, tens of millions of grassroots Republicans. Uh, the Republican Party uh, should be admired when it deserves it, mm. when it, uh, when it uh, effectively puts forward candidates who adhere to those principles, uh, the country will be well off. Uh, when it plays politics and doesn't worry about the principles, it's not. And the Republican Party is sometimes a blessing and sometimes not. Hmm, hmm. Well, it sounds as if like you're sort of like defining the, 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 uh, the concerns and the issues that are facing rep the Republican brand today. Yeah, well, see, I don't think in terms of that brand. Okay. You don't, if you I were to put up a sign, and my sign would read, uh, Republicans or in the case of my county, Josephine County Republicans. Mm -hmm. And the subscript would be constitutionalists, libertarians, independents, and even Democrats welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because those principles mm -hmm. that are timeless and make our country great are shared by many people in this country who are not Republicans. Mm -hmm. And when the people vote for candidates who uh, adhere to those principles and strive to put them forward in the public uh, in, in public office, we're in good shape, and it doesn't matter what party they belong to when mm -hmm. they vote for them. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you ran, like I said, you ran twice against the, the, the Fazio. Three times. Three times as a Republican, right? Mm -hmm. You had the Republican, and yep. you had the Democrat aspect of it. Yeah. But then you, you stayed in it, but there, there were some other activities that you, that you were part and parcel of uh, bringing to the table within the county. Texas well, or I, I'm, a couple I, of issues. I'm, I live in Josephine County, Josephine so county I'm, right. I'm active there. So that now, now, why don't you compare that with reference to your running for Congress? And well, it's different. Uh, okay. Josephine County, for example, uh, it, it one of the battles is big government versus small government. Right. Uh, we should have a constitutional government that is as small and efficient 
as it can be, so it inhibits individual freedom mm -hmm. as much as possible. We can't have no government because mm -hmm. our freedoms conflict. So at the county level, it's easier to enforce these principles because it's a small community mm -hmm. and it's not expensive to campaign there and so forth. In Josephine County, for example, uh, we had a measure on the ballot. Uh, the commissioners had decided to increase the bureaucracy of the county and decrease the freedom of the people in the county. It gave much more power and power that was not needed to the county bureaucrats. Uh, we defeated that 79 to 21. And what was the issue? What was it? Uh, the issue uh, was they wanted to, the measures, uh, put a new bureaucracy in headed by somebody called a hearings officer and a lot of people who worked for him, which would go around, they would have search and seizure powers without warrant in the county to find out if people disobeyed regulations and so on. For example, if your plumbing's broken, uh, most people run down to Home Depot and get some plastic pipe and fix it because they can't afford a plumber. Mm -hmm. But doing that, you could violate some planning law that says you must have a permit to fix your plumbing. Uh, they were going to take that kind of freedom away from us. Uh, basically, uh, to have a whole bureaucracy to watch the people of the county, even inside their private homes, with respect to whether they disobeyed even tiny regulations. Mm -hmm. And, the, uh, and it was going to cost a lot of money and be very intrusive and take some of our freedom away. When it was defeated 79 to 21 with the leadership of Republicans there, we got half the Democrats to vote on our side. Hmm. Half the Democrats. It was uh, four to one. Our county did not want bureaucrats knocking on our doors and checking everything that went inside our, home, inside our homes. Hmm. Some counties in Oregon are unfortunate to already have such laws, but Josephine County rejected them, and it was bipartisan. It true, it is more a Republican issue, so the Republicans and even the Republican Party, because I was state chairman there, and I brought the state party into it, Republicans, that violates our principles, and we found that most of the other people in Josephine County, even those that weren't Republicans, agreed with us. Mm -hmm. And on a county level, that's doable. If that had been a state initiative, it would have been a horrendous, huge, expensive thing with all kinds of special interests in it and much more difficult to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we've recently uh, gotten a much better county council, uh, the, the attorney that helps our commissioners. Uh, order of magnitude improvement. Mm -hmm. At the county level, we were elect, able to elect a very fine man. And most recently, we turned down a tax measure for the tenth time. <laughs> the commissioners tried to raise our taxes. It was the tenth time this has been on the ballot, and for the tenth time it was defeated. At the county, and the Republicans were prominent in that, at the county level, it's easier to maintain freedom than it is at the state and national level because of the tremendous number of resources and the distance away from the voter and the issue. But in county, the way we look at it in Josephine County is we can only be a little pipsqueak trying to help the national problems. Mm -hmm. And we can't do much about Salem either. And they, that together they've given us the highest taxes in the world. But we can argue whether they get higher in Josephine County. You see. Uh, together, the federal government and the state government have made Oregon almost the he Oregonians the most heavily regulated people in the country. But we don't have to have that in, jo in Josephine County. We can't disobey a lot of those big regulations where we can make it help keep making from making it worse in our county. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Josephine County, the uh, it's one of the finest, maybe the finest county in the state, because there's more freedom. Wow! Wow! And we can. I don't know what will happen in the future, but you're better able to maintain your freedom on a local level. Mm -hmm. And there are examples. Switzerland, for example, has is going to run by its counties. Who's that? Switzerland. Switzerland. The country okay. of Switzerland, which is probably the most prosperous in the world per capita and is a very free place. In Switzerland, the cantons, which are the counties, run this country practically. Uh, most Many Swiss don't even know who the president is. Mm -hmm. So there you have local government running a whole country, and I'm not sure that would work for a big place like the United States. Mm -hmm. And if you run the United States under the Constitution and Bill of Rights we have, you're fine. That's a wonderful uh, uh, constitutional mm -hmm. republic. Mm -hmm. So I'm not suggesting right. it would be like Switzerland. Yeah, right. When you have a small unit like a county, you 
you're closer to the voters, mm -hmm. everybody knows each other, and the issues are easier to resolve. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, taking that part and thinking about the state now, mm -hmm. uh, you were there, let's just say, a year and a half, and um, we had a gubernatorial race aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Do you see any light at the end of the tunnel that uh, there was, there was going to be um, uh, statewide uh, offices that may be uh, maybe uh, actually be elected, uh, electing uh, Republicans? Well, you have to be optimistic or you wouldn't work for yeah, it. Right. Uh, but Oregon has not had the best government it should. Uh, whether or not the Republican Party uh, will be able to function well enough to help change that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certainly Oregonians who would make very fine governors, attorney generals, state officers many Oregonians who would be very fine officers in our legislature in Salem. And we have not been doing a very good job of electing those people in the majority. I'm not denigrating all the people that were in right. office, mm -hmm. even Democrats. But uh, it would be better for Oregonians if our electoral process in this state was working better. And as I say, I have great confidence in grassroots Republicans. Yeah. The party works sometimes and should be supported when it does so. And I'm hopeful about the future, but I don't know what will happen. Mm -hmm. I might add, before we get off the state aspect of it and get into the national aspect of it, that um, I think the, it must have been a first when you appointed an, an engagement chair for the Republican Party. Yeah, that was new. Yeah, what was that, that was you. I mean, <laughs> what was your rationale? It's a self-serving question. Yeah. Uh, the, I'll illustrate by a a generalization which is of course not applicable to everyone but mm -hmm. make my point uh, we know that uh, African American voters and Hispanic voters have been voting largely with for Democrats um, and yet I'm sure the Republican principles are better for those people but we haven't been succeeding and one of the ways a, a way that a generalization you you have some nice lady and she has appoint, appointed the outreach chair. And she goes to, say, the black community and says, I am here from the Republican Party to outreach to you for your votes. She's dead. Mm -hmm. that, 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 she's gone. She's not, they were going to be polite to her, but she won't succeed. What you need to do is go to that community and say, we want your candidates. You're Americans, just like us. We can't see any difference, but we notice that we're not getting candidates. We want your candidates mm -hmm. to run in our elections mm -hmm. and to run on our principles. That's engagement, not outreach. And you and I uh, met each other and hit it off because we had the same opinions and beliefs in this, and so we decided there'd be an engagement chair, uh, in committee in the Republican Party, and that was a, a, a big step forward. And you're still the engagement chair, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though I'm not there. They've not they've left you there yeah, yeah, yeah. and that it, it's extremely important because what you see when you see a a large group you see there's almost no difference between a hispanic an african-american and a caucasian american uh, genetically we're probably 99.999 percent <laughs> identical yeah. we have the same hopes dreams needs as everybody else these differences in skin color are so trivial you, you wouldn't even notice them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we all have the same requirements. And when you see one group that is, is sort of being controlled because of some triality like skin color, you know something's wrong and we need to fix it. And I think this thing you and I did together, creating an Great. engagement uh, thing within the Republican Party instead of this sort of bogus outreach yeah. thing, yeah was a step forward, and you've done a terrific job. Well, thank you very much, Art. I appreciate that. In fact, I might add here now that because I'm now engagement chair, but actually there's a co-chair now. Yes, you uh, have a co-chair. Co -chairs. I'm a co-chair. Co-engagement chair. That's right. co engagement with, with a Hispanic Mexican uh, uh, yeah. female. Her name is Delinda Morgan. Mm -hmm. In fact, she ran for Congress at one point in time. But anyway, mm -hmm. Delinda and I are going to be working to together. Mm -hmm. We realize that the issue of immigration is a major issue yeah. in this country. And so it's, it's great to have her on board. Yep. 
and vice versa. There are other issues on the other major. There are the other so-called other cultures are minority groups, but the, the, the two top key yeah. are the blacks and the and the Mexican. Yeah. So we need to solve this issue. So I want to thank you very much for doing that. Good. Well, thank that. you. That, we got that. that done, and so far it's still there. Yes, very much so. Okay, now let's get down to some national issues that, that probably will reflect from a local issue, but I think it will be, be great anyway. Uh, let's talk about, uh, first we're going to talk about the, the two individuals that are actually getting the issues to the table, and that is... Uh, uh, Donald Trump, who's running for, he's a businessman, Donald Trump, who's running for, for president for, for president under the Republican ticket, and also uh, Senator Cruz, mm -hmm. who's a Republican also, too. So both of these individuals are very uh, engaging, if mm -hmm. you will, very engaging same folks. And I'd just like to just kind of just get your feel about, um, about one, let's, let's start off with um, uh, the businessman, Donald Trump. What do you think about Donald? And, and, well, let me and, talk about the two together. Okay? Two together? Okay, Donald Trump and Cruz. How is that? Because I'd like to start with a quote from Ted Cruz. Okay. Uh, and it, this is the quote, although I don't have it okay. in front of me. Uh, Ted Cruz says that one of the most uh, disruptive things you can do in Washington today is tell the truth. Hmm. And he's been telling the truth. And they've been blasting him for it. Uh, I think he's a fine man, and when he tells the truth, I even think more of him. Uh, we have had uh, more and more drift toward simply dishonesty in government, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about just 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 well, dishonesty. Uh, so Ted Cruz is to be admired for that, and he's taken a lot of flack. Running for president too, running for, and he's running for president, running for president yes. as a very fine candidate. Yes, Donald Trump doing the same thing. Now, he's, each of us sees the truth as we see it. And Donald Trump is, uh, 10 billion, has $10 billion and is idiosyncratic, and he can tell it any way he wants. <laughs> and he tells it in a flamboyant way. And I'm not telling you that every nuance or everything he said is true, or in true in the strictest sense. I'm not calling him a liar, but he's trying to tell the truth about some important issues. And he's doing it in a flamboyant way, and it's just raising Cain among the politicians, as Ted Cruz would know it would, because mm -hmm. even though there are disagreements about exactly what's true, when you try to tell the truth, mm -hmm. and you do, uh, 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 people like it. Mm -hmm. So here we have Donald Trump polling higher than any other Republican running for president. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's because the American people are refreshed by that. They see this man try and tell the truth. They see him telling it in an entertaining way. And, uh, and they're responding to it. Mm -hmm. Democrats are responding mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Uh, that's not me telling you that I think Trump's the best man for president. I don't know who the best man mm -hmm. is, and I, so I wouldn't say. Ted Cruz is more conventional. But he's telling the truth, too. I mean, he called this the Republican leader of the Senate, a liar on the floor of the Senate a couple of days ago because the man had told a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and we need more of those kind of people in Washington, even though they are, uh, uh, they can be disruptive. It's easier to go along not facing the truth. And our country has some really severe problems now. And we need to, we need to be finding the truth about every issue and be very candid about it. And these two men are doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not equating them or, or saying they're working or, together, which they're not. Well, the polls, but it's refreshing, and the yes, people love it. Yes, and the polls show it because the American people today are saying, "Hey, I mean, yeah. they're, they're in the, what the low percentile yeah. as far as the, as far as Washington now, is concerned." Now, uh, Donald Trump, uh, because he's outspoken and flamboyant, uh, there are a lot of people who don't like what he's saying, mm -hmm. or don't think he should be saying it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps you can say it in a more polite way. But many of his critics aren't saying it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so even people who, uh, and there are many, I'm sure, who would never vote for Mr. Trump as president, are kind of glad he's there disrupting things among all these uh, career politicians. You know, what we have in Congress, I'll talk about Congress for yeah, a moment because right, I sure. ran for Congress. <clears throat> for the first hundred years of our country, the average congressman served just over two years. Almost all of them were citizen volunteers. They mm -hmm. saved two years and went home. That was it. It was a public service. Today, the average is 12. Mr. DeFazio is 25 years. Once a person in Congress decides that his career is important, he didn't come as a public service, or maybe he came and changed. Once he decides his career is important, he makes decisions and votes for what is best for his career, rather than what's 
principled or good for the people. The career politicians are wrecking our country because they are all on a roll for their careers rather than, not all, mm -hmm. but almost. Mm -hmm. uh, Harrison Smith, whom you quoted, told me this about the Senate. An issue comes up, he was a problem solver. The guy's a Caltech-educated scientist. So he suggests a solution. He said he was the only guy in the room that wanted a solution. The rest wanted the problem to continue, but they wanted to get positioned on it so it helped their careers. Mm -hmm. So the career politicians, and they, the truth does matter a lot to them. What matters is how many votes I'm getting in the last election. Uh, when Mr. DeFazio uh, starts a movement to get lower taxes for beer companies, which he did, a whole lot of campaign compash comes into his coffers from the beer companies. And he uses that to tell stories about me. That's not principled. And it isn't even honest. The push by the career politician to elect him, re elect himself more than anything else, that's what's important, is one of the big problems we have. And of course, that causes them not to be willing to tell the truth because mm -hmm. the truth might not be helpful to them. That's the thing that uh, Trump and Cruz are. Uh, are trying to correct and the American people like it yeah you know when you start thinking about what has always been said the government of the people by the people and for the people you think well okay fine there's someone representing if you will the masses naive that's the elected officials and that's what they're supposed to be doing and uh, and that, that's something that, that that's always a major concern that's always being said and then one other thing on. if you tell the truth and you can tell it with a smile yes you're in you're in that's what Ronald Reagan was yes Ronald Reagan, people don't say too much against Reagan now, but they hated him when he was in. Mm -hmm. His opponents just pilloried him. The Republican Party fought him every step of the way while he was president. But Reagan told the truth, and he told it with a beautiful smile. Wow. And this way the people loved the smile, and they liked the truth, and the combination was irresistible. Okay. Uh, find a politician who tells the truth, Tell the truth with the and smile. smiles while he's doing it. You've really got something. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think term limit would be an issue? Well, it is with the people now because they have this uh, terrible problem with the career politicians. The founding fathers gave us term limits. That's why they had us reelect the House every two years, so we could get rid of them if they did the right job. Right, right. But the politicians have managed to pervert their positions and twist the situation so that they're able to get past these elections. Uh, so the people. Uh, Term limits is, is a slow. That's a hot issue. That's a hot issue. Uh, we is put up signs happen? on various things during the elect this last election. Term limits signs were the most popular. Mm. Uh, we shouldn't need it. We have the ability to term limit them by vote, but we're not doing it. So the American people are becoming more and more no, we're. excited about term limits. Good, good, good. Hey, folks, we're going to get back to art. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Stick with us. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, folks, welcome back. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest. My guest today is former chair of the Oregon Republican Party, Mr. Art Robinson. Okay, and we've been talking about uh, local issues, and, 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 and then we get to the, the national standpoint, and then we talked about uh, two individuals that are basically very, very assertive and, and uh, making, making issues of the issues and getting us uh, interaction. We've got a very important race coming up, very, very important. That's a new a presidential race, and it's a very very important race. So it's, it's it's we need to really talk about the issues and hopefully get some response to these individuals while they're all together because then it's an order interaction. Well, the only two people that have basically laid it out right up front who started mm -hmm. is Donald Trump 
right? Donald Trump and also Senator Ted Cruz. Yeah. Now, in terms of who would be electable and better right. in the office, that, 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 uh, everybody has his preferences. Right, right, right. I like Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, and Ben Carson. Okay, Those okay. Are my kind of people. I was going to talk to you about that. Yeah. I don't know what the people will elect. Those are very fine men. But you have and the Mr. option. Trump, Trump is performing a tremendous service oh, yeah. for the nation right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that he'd be elected. But, you know, but when you think about it, though, Anyone can run for office. This is yeah, the American let's way. Run. Okay. Why aren't you running yeah, for president? Can. Well, you never know. I just might. Yeah, you might. But you know, <laughs> when people start talking about maybe only 15 people are running in the Republican Party for the presidency, there might be another 100, 100 more people that yeah. are basically filed, if you will. Right. But my point, they, they don't have the name from Actually, there. there are. There are more lot people. Lot there are more people. 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 Do file yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. See, now if they want to, if they if they're going to call him a nut or this, that, and the other, then maybe they need to change the application process. And I don't know. I've not seen that yet. But maybe that's, that's what they want to nice. do. You can get a platform. People listen to you. That's right. You get to go and that's mix. Right. That's you right. have the fun of the campaign. That's right. That's right. That's Even right. if you're not going to win. Right. Run for office. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, here's some of the areas, that, the issues that I think are going to be very interesting. That's, that's really getting things really charged up. Uh, immigration, remember, that's really what brought Donald, Donald to the table right off the bat, yeah. the issue. The whole issue of immigration. What do you think? Immigration. Well, what a reference I, I, to I him. say in my book, and I, I was saying by this, uh, the country has to have secure borders, and the people have to obey the laws. Uh, throughout the world, uh, almost all countries have secure borders, and uh, you're not allowed in the country as, uh, to function normally unless you have been admitted under the, under the uh, functional laws. Uh, Mexican-Americans, or Spanish-Americans, who are most of the people they're talking about, but not all, those are fine people. I uh, I see them most often in the Food for Less down in Medford. At midnight, you see these families floating through the store, three generations. Usually it's the current generation, the mm -hmm. older people, the younger people. They're Christian. They're highly family-oriented. And you look at those men, you know they can work hard. Uh, I think it would be a mistake to in any way say that this is, that, that, that this is not a fine uh, the, the 10 million people are not right, mostly right. fine people. Uh, on the other hand, you have to obey the law. And my view is that uh, uh, if they apply to admission to this country, what they did while they were in the country as illegal should be considered, and not that they were illegal, but did they work hard? Did they contribute? Uh, anything they've contributed in their lives uh, should be counted. But I believe that anyone who is illegally in this country should go home and, and apply for admission. Mm -hmm. I believe that is uh, the only way to resolve this matter mm -hmm. uh, because it, with a, a completely porous border and millions of people coming across the border being allowed to come across largely for political reasons, uh, I, I don't think it's good for our country. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone that's in this country should be here lawfully and those who are not should not be looked down on because the system is that you can come in and yeah, lock it. Yeah. That's the system we have. Mm -hmm. But I disagree with that system, and I think everyone should be in here lawfully. And if someone is here illegally and they were required to go home and apply and they don't have the resources, I'd, I'd be for spending my tax money to help them. Mm -hmm. But they need need to reapply. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. You know, you may mention about the ten, maybe sometimes they say ten million, eleven million, or whatever. But no, like you said, there are more. I'm just These are people with green cards. No, but there are people that who had green cards and they, they didn't go yeah. back. You know, what I mean? so they said something about maybe about forty million folks. I mean, well, if they have a green card and they're legal, that's no. That's but the way my it point is. is that after they've gone expired that time, they don't. They need, to go home. they need to go home and get that thing all squared away. You know, another thought someone was said. We were we just kind of talking a little bit about this whole piece. Maybe they should take this the whole issue of of uh, illegal uh, to the United Nations. Everybody's there and just sit down and have a discussion, and then come up with some rules and regulations of well, the game. Like, yeah. like uh, for instance, I'm just going to throw it on the table. Like, for instance, there, there's a lot of expense that goes in with folks who are using the services. Mm -hmm. That's another concern about the American that's, people that's because otherwise we have to pay for it. The other yeah, folks, and we can't. That's one of the reasons we can't. Exactly. And so maybe they can make work in such a fashion where they can keep a yeah. tab, if you will, of those expenses. And in those respective countries who violate that, you can just yeah. from America go here, this country go here, well, say, uh, here's your bill, give me my money. We, we already talked about this to some degree, though. 
Um, we talked about local county government, state right. government, okay. federal government. Now we're talking about world government. All right. World government is almost impossible uh -oh. to uh -oh. function because it's too big. Who, yeah. what, if they're making a mistake, what do you and I do? Nothing. We, we, we're helpless. I believe that, uh, and a very large part of the world does not follow our Constitution and Bill of mm -hmm. Rights. We're having trouble following it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I would not like to see decisions for the United States made by a world government made up of nations who do not even adhere to the rules of our Constitutional mm -hmm. Republic. That's not a, I'm, I hate the United Nations statement. Yeah. It's a statement that the United Nations does not function as a Constitutional Republic under the very fine rules of freedom that our government's founded on. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want countries that don't function that way to be making decisions about our country. So I would prefer not to take it to the United States. So they don't States. have any immigration issues or anything? As well, well as they illegals. probably think about everything. Yeah, they illegals think, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, okay. they try to be a world government. I, I'm not, I, I'm just saying that right. Uh, right. I think Americans have a very fine government if they will follow the rules, right. and I don't right. really want to right. change right. that. Okay, well, and then that, that's, again, discussion. We need to talk about yeah. the whole issue because we've got to solve it, and hopefully out of this, this interaction with, with folks like uh, Donald Trump and uh, Senator Ted Cruz and the other folks who are running for office on both sides of the aisle, Democrats yeah. and Republicans, that issue need, hopefully can be yeah, addressed. Yeah, well, there you have Bernie Sanders. On yeah, the Bernie Democrats Sanders side. on the Democratic side. Bernie right. Sanders, he's a, a wild-eyed socialist. Yes. Obviously, he's not something that Art Robinson is. Yeah. I'm certainly yeah. not that. One thing you can tell about the guy is honest. Yeah. He has been what he is mm -hmm. as long as he's been in politics. Mm -hmm. At least you can trust the guy. Mm -hmm. He he he's a he's a complete socialist. I think he'd be terrible for the country, but he's an honest man. He tells he yeah, tells you what he is, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. that's nice. Uh, you can have an argument if you're on different sides. If both people are honest about what mm -hmm. they're doing, you got a much better chance mm -hmm. of, uh, of success. Well, it forces a platform to people to discuss the issues. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing while we're doing it now as opposed yeah. to getting somebody course, elected. The most important thing is the individual candidate's platform yes. because yes. we're all yes. different. Very much so. Okay, let's talk about some other areas that people are very, were very interested in. The Confederacy flag aspect of it. That was a bit, pretty big issue. Uh, this governor was a governor, Haley, I guess, from from uh, South Carolina, right? Mm -hmm. South Carolina. Yeah. And the whole issue about the flag raising with the, the Confederacy, the battle flag of the Confederacy, that, that was there. And, and then I guess Lindsey Graham was, uh, Senator Graham was part and parcel of, mm -hmm. of making that happen. Mm -hmm. And my position is that I think that had he not been there, the flag would still be up there mm -hmm. politically. I mean, just, just straight up. So, but again, it gives opportunities, if you will, I yeah. think, to talk about the real issues because the other issue of slavery has always been discussed, That's but right. never being taught, if you will, in our in our education system yeah. aspect of it. And the same thing with the uh, either the, the the Civil War aspect yeah. of it. So uh, I'd like to get get your comments about that piece. Well, uh, you and I both grew up in Houston. Yes, that's right. And I was in the South during the time of separate bathrooms, you know, that's and so right. forth. And uh, the tragedy here is that uh, I think the flag is a symbol, but the tragedy is that the people especially our young people, don't receive any real education about slavery and about the issues, the states' rights issues, the other issues. Uh, they uh, are led to believe that there was this evil thing in the United States. Uh, there was nowhere else, something horrible we did to one race. Whereas, in fact, at that time, slavery was a big thing throughout the world. If you're, you could be a white person, you get on the wrong ship in the Mediterranean, you're going to be rowing a boat for the Moors for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Slavery was uh, a thing throughout the world. It was an industry. It was an industry in Africa. Most blacks that came here were captured by their own people yeah. <laughs> and yeah. put on the boats. And of course, it was a horrible thing, the way people were treated. You go back in history far enough, it cost several hundred lives to keep one person in luxury. And it was done through slavery. Mm. Slavery is just to antiquity. It's a huge issue. The world became wealthy enough that we didn't need slavery, and it, of course, was a horrible moral issue. The, the British were the first to solve it. The British Empire was gigantic, and they banned Brit slavery throughout the empire in the early 1800s. Really? If we had not won the Revolutionary War, we wouldn't have had the Civil War because the British would have banned it in the British colonies. <laughs> but Interesting. Um, that, that our young people and even older people don't understand the history of this. 
they don't even understand the history of the South. Now we we uh, we have a school curriculum, you know, we do it for young people, and we like to teach by biographies and autobiographies. So when we get to the Civil War, we have the autobiography of General Sherman, the one of General Grant, the writings of Abraham Lincoln, who was a Republican, mm -hmm. and the autobiographies of the Vice President and President of the Confederacy. You read the autobiographies of those guys, you know what happened. Mm -hmm. But young Americans don't. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't know what this is. One For one thing, to enslave another is a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm glad it's gone from this country. Almost gone, although we have some vestiges. Uh, but it's also important to understand that in historical context, this wasn't an evil within America alone. It was a worldwide evil that came about largely because there were people, and the other still are, that people who will, will break all the rules, be as moral as they can, to, rem to get on top and to support somebody at the top in, in several centuries ago required them to enslave several hundred people at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. And it's wonderful that our country, our nation, our whole world, because of the advance of technology, has become a place where that, they still try to enslave people. Mm -hmm. uh, Americans, a lot of young Americans are enslaved because they're given lousy educations. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about slavery? In Washington, C.C. today, and the U.S. Congress is totally responsible because D.C. is administered by the Congress. Forty percent, and they're mostly African-American students in D.C. It's an African-American city. Forty percent of the students don't graduate from high school. And the, those that do read at an average fifth grade level. This is a form of slavery mm -hmm. because they are taking those young Americans whose minds are as good as anyone else's, but there's plenty of evidence, there's no difference in our mental ability. Mm -hmm. And when they take all the young people in Washington, D.C., and cut them off at the knees for life, intellectually, but not even teaching them to read, that's a form of slavery. Mm -hmm. It means that throughout life, they will be able to manipulate these people because they can't even read the truth in a book. And that's being done by the United States Congress. The majority in Congress today is doing that. And the reason they're doing it is they don't want to go up against the unions. And the education unions in Washington, D.C. like it the way it is. Hmm. Mr. DeFazio has voted against every effort to improve the D.C. schools. Hmm. Now, that's a form of slavery, because here we have a group. It wouldn't matter that, that they have black skin. It could be half white. It doesn't happen to be in that city. But that's a form of, of intellectual slavery, when you don't give someone an education and therefore enslave him by making him vulnerable to people who can read the truth. And he can't, because he can't read. Uh, the, the pockets of slavery, you don't just enslave people by putting them through what happened here in the uh, early part of our nation. You enslave them if you give them no education. Mm -hmm. That's a form of slavery, and it's widespread in our country today because there are many places where people are not getting a decent education. Uh, you can enslave them economically by pumping umpteen trillion of dollars into the economy, but making sure it doesn't go to the lower class, mm -hmm. sending it all to Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, people have a lot, we're people, and people have a lot of negative characteristics as well as positive ones. And th human populations always contain people that are willing to rise at the expense of others. Our Constitution largely prevents that if we obey it. But we're not just out of the slave business because we don't have people on plantations anymore. And that's an educational matter. Our people need to understand it. If they understood it, they couldn't be led around by the nose with lies. Well, we do have a plantation yeah. here in Portland, metropolitan I, I, area. I, I, and, it's and, called Portland Public Schools. Yeah, well, and the <laughs> Portland Public, you know, the average uh, cost of public school across the country is about 10000 per student yeah. per year. Yeah. In Portland, yeah. it's 14000 Yes. You're yes. spending 14000 yes. yes. and you're still enslaving yes. these yes. kids. Yes, yes. So uh, our people, and, and educationally, they need yeah. to understand what the Civil War was, yeah. and it did resolve an important question and improve the nation. Right. They need to understand that that flag is, it's it it, it it's symbol, mm -hmm. but it's not the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is people wanting to enslave other people by educational, 
or economic or other means. Mm -hmm. Our Constitution says that everyone in this country has an equal opportunity mm -hmm. to thrive. Mm -hmm. We need to obey that and we need to teach our young people what that means mm -hmm. instead of telling them that their ancestors 200 years ago were mistreated and therefore they need to vote for one political party mm -hmm. when in fact the oddity is it was the other political party that stopped flavor in the country. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that. And, and they, they can only be misused in that way because they're not taught mm -hmm. and they're deliberately not taught so that they won't be able to. Yeah. That's a huge one, folks. That is a huge one, and hopefully we'll have this kind of conversation, and hopefully you'll have them in, in home, and, and when these folks start running for office around you, ask them those questions. Very, very important. Okay, we've done the immigration piece, we've, we've done the, the slavery piece, and, and whatever, and uh, now let's, let's talk to another one that's, that's just, just gotten out here, really out there up front, Planned Parenthood, being accused, allegedly being accused of... Uh, uh, selling body parts of babies. That's as a friend of mine would call it a no-brainer. <laughs> uh, what has astonished me is that it's not just a recent thing. You know, they mm -hmm. caught a couple people, did fancy videos of them, showed that they were in this. It's coming out that they've been doing this for 20 years. It's a big industry. And I don't think you have to go any farther. Human beings have some negative characteristics but there's not a chance and people sort of decide things in their viscera viscerally you know with mm -hmm. and the visceral reaction of a normal human being is so negative to that that it just stops it stops mm -hmm. now i mean this is absurd uh i'm astonished nancy pelosi wants to investigate the people who did the videos that mm -hmm. did the expose i don't think there's one person in a thousand in your re in your in your people watching your video today, this interview, that would argue that we should be cutting up oh, yeah. oh, kids and selling so, is it pieces. Top of the heap? So uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's just a no-brainer. Well, you know, on and, that same... And, and it on. stops now. Right. Maybe it's in the culture. Uh, my view is that they've been getting away with it fine. Mm -hmm. If it happens tomorrow, they go to jail, mm -hmm. and that, that this, this is unbelievable. Okay. Well, you know, one thing that, that I like to add to this is this is this piece on Planned Parenthood, is that um, it has been said that Congress actually appropriates mm -hmm. quite a bit of funds to Planned Parenthood. To Planned Parenthood, every bit of that funding should stop. Yes, no. this is if the culturally, I don't know much about Planned Parenthood, but the culture in Planned Parenthood permitted the selling of cut up babies. Right. That organization should not only not get federal funding, it should end. Right. Well, you know, and if you want to have something good. with its goals, uh, start yeah. something new. Yeah. I can't believe it'd be very <laughs> hard to imagine any institution, certainly on the conservative side, mm -hmm. that could survive this expose. Mm -hmm. They'd be out of business tomorrow. No one would do business with them. They would be done. And the idea that our tax money is going to them is ridiculous. You know, uh, uh, bringing it local, uh, my guest last week, mm -hmm. I had uh, one of the members, uh, Steve Buell, who was a Portland Public School uh, board member, and also I had a, another guest by the name of Bill Diaz, who was at one point in time an employee of Portland Public Schools and was fired because he would not allow Planned Parenthood to come and mm -hmm. talk to his kids about yeah. what that was all about. And that came into my mind about this piece here, but also the fact that um, I remember trying to go, on, go to Planned Parenthood to try to get them to uh, construct a, a building, mm -hmm. uh, their office, on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Mm -hmm. They suggested that if you had to do that, well then just once you move a couple of streets north, a couple <laughs> of streets north, but they didn't do that. They built it on Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Boulevard. The other thing that came out of the conversation that I interviewed Bill Diaz on this, that this past week was that he had made mention about the fact uh, locally that uh, Senator Wyden and uh, Congressman uh, Bill DeFazio had, had, uh, had basically supported Planned Parenthood. And I thought that was well, interesting. It's kind of like saying, where is the list? I mean, I'd like to see the list of all these guys, but in Oregon, uh, these are two people that I know. We can get into what did they know and when did they know it. Yeah. And I don't know what Wyden and DeFazio knew about Planned Parenthood. Right. I can suppose, but, right. I'm gonna, but, but I know they know this. today. They know today. So they what are they know today gonna... that Planned Parenthood has a culture which mm -hmm. has in, encouraged and supported the cutting up of children and selling of the parts. Mm -hmm. And if those guys don't renounce that support tomorrow, they should be impeached. 
and a lot of businesses too. I saw a lot of corporations, yeah. if you will, that have been giving. I mean, it just blew your mind. I mean, I never got it off of social media yeah. aspect of it. They, they, they need some pretty major uh, corporations. Well, this kind of rot isn't always known to the people that are right. supporting. Exactly. Them. And there's all kinds of political nuances and where they get their support, you know. And right. It's, oh, yeah. it's a right oh, yeah. to life issue. Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, I don't think that uh, um, you can condemn everyone who has no. supported Planned Parenthood right. as someone who agrees to cutting up children. Mm -hmm. But we know the culture within the organization allowed a lot of this. It wasn't a mistake. They've been doing a lot of it for 20 years. And that means to me that organization is over. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have an organization that supports abortion, which I oppose, but you want to have one, uh, you can have one, but Planned Parenthood has shown that it is not supportable by decent human people, mm -hmm. human beings, mm -hmm. it's just not. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, the other thing I like, especially during these times here now, you got the Donald Trumps, if you will. And yeah, the, you know, the outcry the against Trump for saying, telling the truth is worse than the outcry against Planned Parenthood exactly. by the left. Yes, yes. You know, and, and, and to think about that, you know, when you think about those folks, when they make when they do get those offices, if you will, in Congress and the like, um, there's lobbyists who basically represent other entities like a Planned Parenthood oh, yeah. and the like. And they're and talking to these folks about, hey, I'll give you contributions, I'll support you sure. if you sign off on this bill, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and, if I, were, I never would have been because of my view of pro-life issues, but if I were in Congress and I'd been taking contributions through Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. and I found out about this, mm -hmm. I'd drain the coffers in my campaign to give every dime of it back. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that because, and it's the other thing that I had, and it's really, it really, really bothered me because when you think about the Planned Parenthood piece, and then and, you, and, you, and I, I did some research about where they want to build their offices, if you will, and and, and do these kinds of things, if you will, um, uh, they were in black communities, and I'm thinking, and I'm asking the question now: How many black babies? Oh well, if you will, uh, were, it's were, well known that uh, the majority of the children aborted. Or, 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 or have, you have to normalize or poor, population. Poor, and, poor and, blacks and, and, have been the greatest victims of abortion. Wow, wow. Uh, I don't care where the headquarters are. They should have for sale signs on them today exactly. for rent. I don't exactly. even want to pay for them. Just get them out. Just so I'd like to ask the entire congressional delegation that goes to Washington from the state of Oregon yes. to either let the, let the media, let the media know whether or not they signed off and actually, you know, signed off for these, these funding sources, and do they still support, if you will, if Planned they, Parenthood? If they, if they have that for funding, them. and uh, my guess is four out of the five do, right. I, I can't right. have to look. Uh, every dime should, be, should yeah. return yeah. tomorrow, yeah. and they should be advocating a vote to ban, ban Planned mm -hmm. Parenthood from mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. If you, the, the, you can go only so far. It's bad enough these children are being killed. Yeah, exactly. But they're being dismembered and exactly. the pieces sold. Oh, wow. How far down do you expect this country to be able to go morally and still survive? Where is the moral, uh, uh, the moral argument to even exist if you can let some things that are that bad mm -hmm. occur? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, th this, the American people should just get sick of their stomach and regurgitate Planned Parenthood and say that was a, we want to forget that happened. And Just I wonder, like they forget, they're forgetting about the, about, about uh, people who cut up adults during yeah, wars. Yeah. You know, there have been some yeah. monsters who have done this yeah. in, in some countries during wartime. And today those people are reviled and in fact not even talked about because people don't want to even think about what they mm -hmm, did. Mm -hmm. And this is where this should go to. And I would hopefully that, that uh, uh, Congressman Earl Blumenauer would take the issue with this because that's where the majority of blacks are here within his particular district. Mm -hmm. And I would think that he would be up at, the, at the front of this deal. And I'm asking him, if you will, I if he could be. contact some of his, his constituents. Every congressman should be. Take the lead. You know what I mean? Take and the I, lead. I'm not suggest I, I think Congress needs to be cleaned out. And yes, some right. Better people right, there. Right. And, I, I, and I think Oregon could Yes. Could, could, could use some cleaning, but that's my view. But I don't think anyone civilized can have a view that, and, and the view that 
people should remain in office that still support this kind of exactly, thing. Exactly, exactly. So voters, you hear where I'm coming from on this piece here. Ask them. Give them a call. They've got a number. Ask them just point blank. Do you, are you supporting this organization? If you were supporting it, do you, do you, have you sort of signed off on it, on this piece or whatever? But, you know, it's, it's very serious. And, again, I'm, I'm saying it straight up. I'm, I'm, I'm also interested in the other kids and whatever that have been gone through this whole business of the knife of being cut up and this, that, and the other. But more specifically, I'm very concerned about how blacks were treated with this, for this piece, the fact that they were building these, these institutions within the black communities. So, hey, that's something that we need to And this to should not be handled by, we won't do it anymore. That's right. Uh, if an organization is so corrupt it will permit such a thing, the organization should be ended. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we don't say to a, a convicted murderer, well, if you promise not to do it anymore, we'll let you out of jail. Mm -hmm. uh, to people who will do this culturally, if, if their culture within the organization permitted this, the organization right. has to go. Right. And I'm not just talking about, by, by the, I'm not talking about just Democrats. I'm talking about Republicans, anybody well, elected to office. The same thing. All of them, anybody. And this is kind of hard because yes. these politicians, remember we talked about how they want to, they want to act so they'll remain in office. Mm -hmm. There's a big lobby for Planned Parenthood. Yes. They would like not to do anything. Mm -hmm. I think they have to. They have to on that too. And there's quite a bit of money there. Well, Art, this has been great. I mean, you, you sort of shared the, uh, shared the, uh, kind of a number of the concerns here again, within our area. Uh, I won't say that you picked up your Trump card. But, <laughs> well, but the fact of the matter is, I, is that I, it's a I like politicians time. who tell the truth. Yes. Mr. Trump is quite flamboyant. Yes. Mr. Cruz is not, but he's telling the truth, and so are some of the other fine candidates. Yes, yes. I, uh, um, I think we've had a good discussion. Good. Appreciate but you know, I don't smile good. like Ronald Reagan, oh, well, we, which is probably why we're having this discussion, but you're because there. I'm not in Washington, because I didn't. <laughs> but you're getting there now, see that? And that's why I invited you. Well, thank you for, thank you for having me. All right, thank you very much for being with us, and hey, trust me, Get out there and ask those questions. Please ask those. It's a very, very important time in our life at this point for this country. The issue of immigration needs to be resolved and these other issues like Planned Parenthood and the like. So ask the people who you've elected. It is still a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Have a good one. Take care. I'll see you next time around. Take care.